I know that, Q replied, but every pony else, well, they only see you as a braggart now, a self-centered unicorn that is only interested in making herself better than every pony around her. Q leaned in closer, staring straight into Trixie's watery eyes. But that's not what you want at all, is it? There was a long silence, but Cube refused to break eye contact with the other mare as she proceeded the information. As she processed the information, finally Trixie wailed in despair, throwing her forelegs around the stallion and sobbing into his shoulder. What have I done? She, she cried. I've let myself just, just become horrible and a thoughtless pony. I've made an enemy from every pony I knew. From her hiding spot, Ditsy could only watch in amazement, utterly dumbfounded. Everything she thought and she knew about the blue unicorn's true personality was completely wrong. The only thing I have left. The only thing. Trixie mumbled as she hiccuped away the last of the fit of sobs. The only thing I don't understand is how you were able to see the real me, even I had... Even if I had lost sight of my real self. I've had a lot of time to think about it, Cube admitted, and a lot of others talk to talk it over with. A determined expression came over his face. Listen to me, Trixie, it's not too late to turn everything around or have the career you've always dreamed of. The ponies of Equestria are not as cold and as unforgiving as you've taken them to be. Trixie gasped. You think you think they could still accept me? I haven't ruined my chances to bring a genuine fun of a magic show to Equestria? Of course not, Cube said. Show a little humility, humility, and soon you'll be the most popular magician around. Trixie gasped. I just had a brilliant idea, she announced. You could come with me and help me with your promotions until I can prove to any pony that I changed. Cube shook his head. As much as I'd love to, I have to leave, in fact. I have to leave right now. I've been here, and I've overstayed my welcome. Trixie looked distraught. Where are you going? Back to where I came from, Cube responded simply. There are a lot of ponies who need me, and I don't know when or if I'll ever be back. Trixie was horrified. You can't. You're the only pony that was able to find the part of me I lost. What if I need your help again? You won't, Cube said with a smile. After all, you are the great and powerful Trixie. I'm sure you can handle it. Trixie smiled weakly. Well, I suppose. Cube's horn began to glow with his magic as he prepared to teleport. If I ever come back, I'll visit you and see how you're doing. I promise. Trixie nodded. And one more thing, Cube said, as the air around him began to distort. Where I come from, you have thousands. No, make that tens of thousands of fans. Tens of thousands, Trixie asked. With stars in her eyes, Cube nodded and then disappeared in a bright flash of yellow light. Trixie sat on the silent pathway, staring at the spots where the pony, who had turned her life around, had just vanished. Thank you, Cube, she said around aloud. I swear, I won't let you down. Equestria is about to meet the new and vastly improved, great and powerful Trixie. The unicorn leapt into the air, shooting off dazzling arrays of fireworks, which invigorated the mare's rekindled spirit. These were brighter and much more beautiful than they had been in years. Ditsy Doo burst through the door of the doctor's curiosity shop to find the doctor himself delivering final travel instructions to Cube. Setting behind the ponies was the doctor's time and space transcending machine, a tall blue rectangular structure that looked somewhat like a home among all the strange objects lying around. There you are, Cube said when Ditsy walked in. I was just about to leave your pay with doctor if you know, didn't make it back in time, but... Here, take it now. He tossed a bag of coins to Ditsy, who smiled gratefully. So, Doctor, the Pegasus began. You're going to take Cube home in your magic outhouse? <laughs> the Doctor glared at the mare. It's not an outhouse, as you know full well, Ditsy. And yes, the two of us are just about to depart. Come along, Cube. The Doctor stepped into the confines of the strange machine, and Cube moved to follow. Cube, hang on, Ditsy said quickly. The unicorn turned to the Pegasus with a curious glance. I just wanted to tell you that that was amazing, Ditsy said. No pony here knew the truth about Trixie. I'm sure she's going to owe a lot to you in the future. 
I'm just glad I could help her out, Cube said. Maybe now she'll have a chance of appearing in season three. And you now you are completely right. <laughs> oh, that was that was well done, well done, well done. Jitsi raised an eyebrow. Appearing in what now? Cube laughed. Never mind, but keep an eye on her in my absence, will you? Titsy nodded. Well then, bye, Derpy, the stallion cried as he ducked back into the doctor's device. I'll try to come back and visit you someday. Ditsy didn't even attempt to correct the unicorn as he slid the door shut. A moment later, the large box vanished into thin air, spiriting away the doctor and the enigmatic unicorn who had left his legacy on both Trixie and Ditsy today. There was a loud thump on the big blue police call box clunked onto the pavement. The door slid open, allowing Cube and the doctor to gaze out in the surroundings. Let me check what time it is. Uh, 6.04. They had landed in front of the tall skyscraper, the center of the complex of buildings all operated by ponies. Which, considering that this was Earth and not Equestria, was a strange thing indeed to all the humans living nearby. The doctor peered up to the top of the skyscraper, where a gigantic globe was perched on top of a pinnacle. Spinning slowly was the letters EQD that were fastened to its sides. Side. What is this place? The doctor asked. His traveling companion nodded. Yep, thanks for the ride. Oh, it was no trouble, the doctor insisted before disappearing inside his machine and vanishing once again. The unicorn watched him disappear before trotting into the building. One unicorn magic operated elevator ride to the top of floor later, and the yellow stallion arrived at the executive office, immediately drawing the attention of two other ponies present there. Once w one was a white pegasus with a hot pink mane who had been typing away furiously at one of the computers, and the other was a dark gray unicorn stallion with a navy blue mane, who stood on his hind legs with his back against the bulging door, desperately trying to contain whatever was behind it. Dude! The gray unicorn cried indignantly. Where the heck have you been, Seth? I can't hold these friggin' emails back any longer! What? The unicorn whose name was really Seth replied, equally indignant. You can't complain to me about that, serial velocity. You're the one who threw me through the prototype portal in the first place. Oh yeah, how'd that work out? Serial asked, abruptly forgetting the crisis at hand. Not bad, actually, Seth said. I got to meet Derpy and the doctor and hang out with Trixie for a while, of course. Awesome, Serial said. Too bad the power supply died right after you went through. Looks like we need to make a little bit more modifications. Um, guys, the Pegasus in the corner piped up. You know, we do kind of have a situation here. Well, you haven't exactly been much help, though, Serial grumbled. I'm over here barely containing a flood of emails, and you're sitting there in the corner browsing through pictures of Lyra all day! Full blushed and hurriedly closed her browser. <laughs> Seth trotted over to his computer and loaded up his blog, Equestria Daily. Daily. To your station, Serial, he commanded. Serial leapt out from the door, landing in the chair in front of his computer. A moment later, the door burst open, letting the emails flow. Seth gazed at the oncoming flood of pixelated envelopes with determination. All right, guys. Let's post some pony. Meanwhile, back in Equestria... Ditsy Doo was arriving at home just as well. It was getting late and Dinky had already gone to bed. Ditsy smiled at the thought of her filly being so responsible. The mare was just about to collapse weakly on her stomach when she heard a knock on the front door. Now, well, who could be visiting at this hour? She wondered as she moved quickly to her front door. Upon opening it, she found herself facing a pony that she hadn't seen in a long time. A yellow pegasus with a turquoise mane and light blue eyes. Raindrops, Ditsy cried excitedly, recognizing at once one of her best friends from her days working at Clouds Down Mill and Freight. It's so nice to see you. Come in. Raindrops smiled back, but her expression betrayed something other than joy. Hi, Ditsy, she said softly as she trotted inside. I'm sorry I came earlier, but you weren't here. Dinky said you'd be back tonight. Ditsy nodded. Yep, it was a long day. Speaking of which, how are things in Cloudsdale Mill and Freight? I've been gone a year now. Has anything changed? Raindrops frowned. Well, that's actually what I needed to talk to you about. You see, there's been a nasty lawsuit 
dragging on between our company and the Canterlot Treasury for months now. Ditsy, Ditsy's brow knitted in concern. Why? What happened? Well, uh, Raindrops looked uncomfortable. Remember the Canterlot riots that occurred because you and some delivering difficulties? That last message to, you know, Princess Celestia? Ditsy nodded, recalling, recalling the sour memory. Well, it was discovered a few days later that the damages were more than, you know, extensive. And it wasn't expected. Raindrops continued. One of the buildings destroyed was a treasury building containing ancient artifacts dating back to the era prior to Luna's banishment. The bill for this was shoved onto Cloudsdale Mill and Freight. The sum was astronomical, and the court started up all over it. That's not good. Did he agree? What happened? Well, the court came to a decision this morning, Raindrop said, oh, her voice cracking. After all the evidence regarding the incident was reviewed, the jury decided that the sum that, sh that the sum shouldn't be posed on Cloudsdale mail and freight. Well, that's good, said Ditsy. They could have put them out of business. You don't understand, Raindrop said. Instead, the one the court determined owes the sum is the pony that was directly responsible for the damages. You mean everybody that was rioting? Ditsy gasped and watched in horror as raindrops reached slowly into her mailbag and withdrew a bill addressed directly to Ditsy Doo for a sum of no less and no much for a sum of no less or no more than one billion bits. Ditsy teared up and started at the pe and stared at the piece of paper. But I can't possibly afford raindrops had tears in her eyes as well. I'm sorry, Ditsy. We really tried not to let this happen. It was our boss, wasn't it? Ditsy whispered. He singled me out to save the company. No, Raindrops cried. Mr. Brown worked harder than any of us to prevent this. He told the jury all about you, your disability, and the fact that you were a single parent. He begged, he pleaded, he literally on his knees not to afflict you with any debt. But Canterlot had some very convincing lawyers jury couldn't be swayed. Ditsy shook her head, flicking tears around the room. We'll go back to living in poverty for the rest of our lives if I have to pay for this, she moaned. Raindrops hugged her old friend. I really hate that this happened to you. I did everything I could. Ditsy sniffed. Thanks, Raindrops. You're a real good friend. Still sobbing, Raindrops left Ditsy's cottage. Something caught Ditsy's eye as she glanced at the pile of mail under the intimidating bill. A purple, sparkling envelope glittered there, stamped on the royal seal, and the mirror realized what it once was. Celestia's Academy for Gifted Unicorn, she thought gleefully. If Dinky lives there, she will be spared living in the enormous debt with me. As long as Dixie's okay, I don't care what happens to me. This is the answer I've been looking for. Excitedly, Ditsy tore open the letter she had received from the Academy. Per perusing the short note. Dear Miss Ditsy Doo, This letter has been sent in regards to your daughter, Dinky Doo, who has applied for the enrollment of Celestia's Academy for Gifted Unicorns. We have reviewed Dinky's application. Her health records seem to be in order, and her current elementary school grades are spectacular. However, it has come to our attention that your young Ditsy lacks any basic magical training which most fillies and colts receive from a parent or guardian by this age. Celestia's Academy is an advanced school and as such holds to the standard that students must properly be trained in basic magical arts before enrolling them, so as not to be left behind by the complex topics often discussed in even the simplest classes. Regrettably, as Dinky is without these basic skills, she simply cannot be considered for enrollment at our establishment. This may come as a disappointment, but I assure her, allowing her to enroll at her current level would put her at a severe disadvantage among her students. This is what is best for her. Regardless, thank you for your interest and enrollment into the Academy. Brightspark, Acting Dean, Celestia's Academy for Gifted Unicorns. Ditty was not. Her eyes scanned the paper again and again, hoping futilely that she had misread something. She couldn't bring herself to believe the awful turn of events. 
Without a chance to attend the academy, Ginky would be stuck here, living with her mother, trapped beneath a cloud of imposing debt. She would have to suffer along with her mother, living off only the barest essentials for her survival for years to come. And there was absolutely nothing she could do about it. Ditty had... Ditty's head fell to the tabletop, and she wept. Uh, no! Why? How could this happen? <laughs> Man, that's that was pretty. That was pretty sad. You can you can turn off the recording if you don't want to listen to me rant. But uh, why? Why? Would... Curse you, awesome. Writer. Manly tears have been shed. Holy crap, that went from hilarious to emotionally depressing. So quickly, you get all my faves. Um. Uh, okay. That chapter started out good, then it got so good, and then it got sad, and the ending was depressing. After all that ever did he put in too, just when things were going splendid, everything started crumbling around her once again. This chapter went from good to great to hilarious, mostly around the part with the EQD, I love that part, to absolutely horrible. This better come out good for Ditsy in the end, or Soul Heavenly PRB. You shall pay for making Derby cry. I can't really express how far beyond my expectations this fic is at this point. Umsgs. First off, Pinky broke the fourth wall, EQD utterly destroyed it. Secondly, manly tears were shed. Agreed. This chapter was friggin' amazing, and I'm going to say I can't comprehend the level of awesomeness right now. That was just wow. God, and I thought this was going to be a happy ending. There's a little chance for that now. How can Ditsy, I prefer Derpy as many do, paying one million bits? I think I pulled a ligament in my brain on this chapter. And what an emotional roller coaster you have there by Faust. Sans, the ending. This was the most amazing chapter ever. I have not laughed this hard in a while, and it was great. Clearly, I have arrived to this fic late, but I really hope someone at the EQD told Seth to read this, because I'm sure he would have laughed like crazy if he did. As for the ending, you are such a terrible person for doing that to Ditsy. I say with this with all my love. P.S. I don't know what's written in the relation to the program, but I would be amazed if another meta chapter that was the scat slash terribly. It would be so good. I'm OOFC. Seriously though, it would be funny. I'm sure that definitely a good short out from the manliest body in the world. I went through this image http forward slash forward slash four dot bp dot blogspot dot com slash slash g u x l h c one j d e o forward slash t u e n h t t a r s i forward slash a a a a a a a b b g Forward slash one w r v w w b o z e u forward slash s four hundred forward slash m l p underscore d dot jpeg. Completely and utterly brilliant. I agree. And oh god, no! It's twenty minutes long.